Hey, how's it going today? We are working on an intake, taking it from this to this. If you guys want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe, but let's get into it. So we're gonna start the intake cleaning process by actually getting it clean and degreased. We're gonna start with basic, simple green, uh, wire brush, and just some roughness to it. We went and hit it with some brake clean and xylene as well in the parts cleaner. It just makes things a little easier. In that brush, it just kind of knocks things off. Uh, once that's done, we can kind of strip it down. I just want to make sure we get to everything we need to get to before we start taking things apart. It's just easier sometimes to clean it before you actually start taking things apart. Once the intake is cleaned up, we can then strip it down with some media blasting. So for people that are actually really interested in cleaning parts at home, media blasting is basically the only real way to do it and to do it effectively anyway. I mean, you could do it by hand like we did in the previous video in the card above, but that said, this is probably the same amount of time and it comes out so much better. So if you don't have one, at least look at one of the Harbor Freight ones. It might not be the best thing around um, and it might need some modification, but at least you have something to get going. I mean, for a couple hundred bucks, you can save yourself either a lot of money or you can pick up a new hobby and make some extra money on the side. Really, it's up to you if you want to spend time on this. But look how effectively this thing actually cleans. All of the rust is coming off fairly easily, and we're using just basic slag material here. Nothing crazy. Um, just... So while it does strip really well, what I actually like most about it is how it retains the detail in the lettering. I can actually get between each letter, each rib, and make sure it's really, really nice. And not just factory nice, but even a little better than factory in some occasions, like we'll see when I start removing the flashing, which is the next step right about now. So all these Pontiac intakes and old intakes in general have a lot of casting flashing. So this is just the material that's left over from the casting um, when they poured the metal in and it's just extra material. What we use is a carbide burr and a sanding roll just to kind of make things nice and smooth. I did have to get in there a little bit with a long carbide burr to get some of the nooks and crannies. And I'll link those in the description down below if you just want to check those out. They're fairly cheap and they're really worth doing. Um, if you do buy a die grinder, I do suggest buying a halfway decent one. The main reason is you're really throwing something around at, what, 20,000 RPM potentially. And you want to make sure you have a good strong collet and something that's not going to huck a piece of sharp metal across your shop. Um, I've had that happen already a couple times with some burrs and a cheap die grinder. And I was not very happy with it going across my garage and potentially injuring somebody or something that I pay a lot of money for. I mean... Somebody I care about. Yeah, that's somebody I care about. How about that? So really what we're looking to do here, just get rid of all the nasty flashing lines uh, and maybe a little bit of casting imperfections on the inside of the runners themselves as well. Uh, while this is taken apart and totally stripped, I would soak this in some kind of material like uh, lye or something like that to get the rust out of it um, on the inside of it. Once that is done and dried, you can begin to tape your intake off. Uh, being a Q-Jet intake, it takes maybe an X-Acto knife and some razor blades and a little bit of time to make sure you get it done right. You'll notice that I ended up having tape over top of the, the round holes on the intake. I swapped those out for super cheap screws and bolt heads uh, just because I couldn't quite get the tape to work how I wanted it to, like I did on the Torker 2 intake that we did. But, you know, you just adapt and overcome and make things happen. So once that was done, we were able to actually get paint on it. So the paint that we used is a duplicolor paint. It is a deep dp1610 um this color is extremely close to the 65 color and it basically was just the right choice for us it's called pontiac blue it's also ceramic enamel so it lasts for a fairly long time and is pretty strong the nice thing about it is it's a three-step application so you just paint it three times and it is pretty much good to go all right so after well a few hours and a whole lot of effort this intake is finally done. Let's check it out how it actually looks. You know, a lot of the small details like the flashing, the paint um, inside, the intake itself is all pretty well cleaned up. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. If you guys like what you're seeing and want to see more content like this, please subscribe. Have a good one and I will see you on the road.